The less your business depends on you, the more valuable it is. Let me say this one more time. The less your business depends on you, the more valuable it is. The more your business depends on you, the less valuable it is. This is why a lot of, uh, when you see, you know, businesses that it's just about sales and a product goes out and there's no, resi- no renewals or no residuals on it, you don't see a big X factor from private equity firms. Private equity firms are not interested in buying a business that's just sales transaction and if the personality leaves and nothing's going to be there. So your goal is to just try to see this observation right here. This is you, this is value. Your goal is to bring you like this so the value goes higher. So if all of a sudden the business is there and you're not around, the, the business is going to be higher and higher in value. Does that make sense to everybody, by the way? Yes or no? Okay. Did Apple become a trillion dollar company with jobs around? No. Do we buy Apple today based on jobs? No. Jobs did his part, did his part right. So that's the part about the replacement game. The one company no one's even talking about today, everybody's given a lot of love to two companies. One is Amazon, one is Apple. You know what's the one company no one's talking about today? Microsoft. They're about to be the trillion dollar company next. Bill Gates understood this concept of taking them here so Microsoft's value is here. So now let's go through this. Thinking like a CEO. Look, most of us in this room, almost everybody in this room, if you think about a grant who now goes out there and buys a plane that's worth 60, 70 million dollars telling me he buys it cash. How did he start off? You know, you got a guy like Brad here who runs one of the uh, training programs that everybody's using VT Lightspeed and everybody around the country is using this. Names everybody knows. How did he get started? How did a tie get started? So this is the evolution process. Most of us start as an employee. Who at one point of their lives has had a job before? Raise your hand if at one point of your life you had a job. Okay, so once we have a job, you do work like, if you do this behavior, we pay you 20 bucks an hour. If you do this behavior, you make 15 bucks an hour. Whatever it is, you get paid per hour, right? Then you go from employee to being a salesperson. Sales agent, salesperson, sales, whatever you want to call it. The difference from the mindset of an employee to this is what? How many people have seen a person that goes from being an employee to a salesperson fail miserably immediately? Who, who's seen many? And why is that? Anybody knows why? Because what? I can't hear you. Because an employee, someone's telling you what to do. When you become a salesperson, no one's telling you what to do. So you have to learn that mindset has to shift for you to realize if I don't get to work, I'm not going to, you know, you ever hear people that become salespeople, all of a sudden I'm an employee and I become a salesperson and then they don't show up to the office for two days. How come you're not at the office? Well, look, I'm an independent contractor and I don't have to show up, right? I mean, this is why I did this so I can stay home and have my own schedule. That's a gimmick, man, you're buying into. He's about to be an employee very soon because he has no idea what it is to be an independent contractor, right? So then from this mindset comes the next one. What's the next one? You become a sales leader. There's a big different mindset between this and this. What is it? Here's the difference. It's very difficult. Let me explain. Once you get good in sales, I know how to go sell 10 of these to an AV company and I make 600 bucks. Okay? So I know I know how to make money, but I have to teach him how to go sell this and I have no patience to teach him because he doesn't understand it and I have to coach him. So this is when you'll hear a lot of people that transition from here to here, use the phrase, how many have heard somebody say, I'm sick and tired of babysitting people? Who's heard that before? How many times have you said it before? I don't like babysitting people, I'm so sick and tired of babysitting people. It's not babysitting people, it's mindset. That's not in place. Then from sales leader, what comes next? You become a business owner. Now what's the difference mindset between a sales leader and a business owner? Now you got assistance, now you got cost, now you got office, rent, compliance, payroll, accounting, legal, all this stuff that you got to go through. And that's when you hear people from here don't make it here and they go back. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, I'm going to go start my own business. I had no idea this is what it was like. I'm going to go back and I just want to run a sales team. This is also shift in mindset. And then you could be a great business owner, but you're not a good CEO. And that's where I was at. So I learned how to run a sales team, I learned how to sell, I learned how to run a business, but I wanted to think like a CEO. And so one day I'm sitting there and I'm asking myself, literally, I have no clue what to do. This is like five, six years, I'm like, I don't know what to do. 
So what does a CEO do? What does a founder do? What's supposed to be my day to day? And I became obsessed about figuring out a formula that tells me the CEO what I need to do to maximize my time. I can do 50 different behaviors, but which ones give me the highest amount of uh, revenue and increase the value of the company? So that's when this formula came about of linear versus exponential growth. How many people here have somebody that works for them 70, 80 hours a week, but their income is absolutely flat? Let me say this one more time. Who has somebody here that works very hard? Even somebody in the room. Anybody you know that works very hard. You tell yourself, Pat, I work 60, 70, 80 hours every single week, but my business hasn't grown for two years. Does anybody know anybody like that? And it's very frustrating, right? What happens when you go through it? You start really telling yourself, this thing doesn't work. Business isn't for me. I just don't know what people are talking about, right? What am I doing? This is the difference. A lot of the focus that person's putting in is here and not here. This expands, this doesn't. So what's the difference? Let's talk about the four areas of focus. So linear, exponential. I'm gonna spend the rest of the time talking here, um, and then I got the last point I'll make to you, and I think tonight there's gonna be a Q&A before we get on our flight tonight to go to Dallas. I got a midnight flight to Dallas, so we'll take off after the Q&A. But let's talk about this here. Linear, exponential. Okay, linear. Operating system. What's operating system? What is operations? Can anybody tell me what operations means? Like, what is operations in a business? Yes. The process of delivering a service or a product to your customers. Okay, what else? Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, what else? Can you tell me which type of personalities never pays attention to this? A type personalities, they don't pay attention to this. Right? Big personalities, they don't pay attention to this. By the way, big personalities, they get annoyed by this. It's like, oh my gosh, give me a break. That doesn't really matter. I don't need to think about systems. I don't need to think about operations. What are you talking about here? So we start the business. My wife says, babe, we need to buy this software. We don't need to buy this software. We need to focus on sales. We need to buy this software because the sales is coming in. What are we going to do if we don't get the software? Do you know how much the software costs? I can take this money and put it in advertising. It's going to help. Babe, I get it. But we are going nuts here. You need six people to process 10 pieces of business. If we buy this software for half a million dollars, you need one person. And it's going to process 50 pieces of business. Why are we putting ourselves through this? So you have to hire more employees. Let's get this software. I still don't get it. Let me do the math. Here's what we're looking at. If you got six employees at 50 grand, that's $300,000. This is the limit we have. If you want to go higher, you need 12 employees, $600,000, 24 employees, one point. Do you want to increase your payroll? No. Then let's buy the software. That's operations. So then we bought the software. Then everything was clicking. Tick, 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 tick. So this is more like, hey, I get a loan. From the loan, it goes to escrow. From escrow, it goes to, you know, give me some of the processes. Escrow goes into title, title appraisal, all these things you're going through. That's operations. It's boring. But if I can figure out a way to close the loan faster, if I can figure out a way to place the policy faster, I get ahead. Again, what I just talked about, most people are bored out of their minds. Let me explain this part about investors. We have one of our investors, a $5 billion fund from New York, Adelaide Fund. Okay? Oscar De La Hoya is another one. Gabriel Brenner is another one. Okay? Here's how investors look at you. They first look at you, they say, wow, he's so impressive. Then they give you money based on this. They don't give you money based on your personality. They give you money once they see this. So all the A-type personality, the excited, big, you know, machismo, all those guys, if you don't pay attention to this, forget about valuation. You may look good because you made a few sales, you're not building value, okay? Operations is constantly figuring out, like you make a list, you make lists and say this job, this job, this job, this job, I'm doing seven different things right now. Why am I doing these seven different things? I need somebody that helps me with this. I need somebody who helps me with this. That's operations. Biz dev. What's biz dev? Okay. Relationships. So strategic partnerships. Finding somebody that if I help you, you win here and I win here. You give me clients. I give you clients. We cross pollinate. Everybody wins. Strategic partnerships. Biz dev. That means you got to shake hands. So do you make a list and say, who would benefit from what I'm doing right now? Who can I help that I also need their help? This is the part where you got to go out and shake hands. Whatever industry you're in, there's annual conferences. There's annual conventions. 
Whatever industry you're a part of, you got to go to them. You got to go to them and get ready. Shake hands. Shake hands. We have our own. And by the way, the insurance industry, just so you know, you name me one product in the world more boring than life insurance. Let me say this one more time to you. I'm in the industry. You name me one product more boring than life insurance. Let, hear me out, guys. What I do for a living is we talk about dying every day. Listen, we come to you, and the moment the word life insurance comes up, what do people do? A guy came up here with a camera in my face. He says, hey, Pat, what do you think about the PNC and insurance future of the industry? What do you think is going to happen to PNC and insurance? I said, it's a big difference. He said, no, it's not. It's insurance. I said, no, believe me, it's a big difference. Why is it a big difference? He was at this event like six hours ago. He says, what's the big difference? I said, it's a law to buy auto insurance. <laughs> it's not a law to buy life insurance. It's a choice. And life insurance always has to be what? Sold. I have to come sell it to you. No one wakes up and says, babe, I feel so good about buying some life insurance today, babe. Let's go get some life insurance today. Oh my gosh, no one does that. So I have to find a way to get to you, right? So we go to these conferences and we shake hands and we build relationships and we see new products, new things coming out, new relationships. And some of the people you shake hands with, then you build, business, build relationships. By the way, this is all manual. For instance, if I work for you, I was talking to this gentleman right here. He's based out of New York, I believe, right? You're based out of New York. Him and I are talking outside. Great questions he's asking me at Wolfgang Puck. By the way, one thing about Syl and Al, uh, uh, Albert, I gotta tell you guys, like this is an absolute world-class event from the moment I came here to now. Everything about their treatment, give them another round of applause for a phenomenal job these guys have done. Seriously, unbelievable. So he comes up to me. We start talking. What do you do? I got 50 salespeople. Is it this company? No, but I know about that company. And we're gonna kill that company. Awesome. So do you have a manual? What kind of manual? Is there a manual that if I come and work for you, you can give to Albert, that Albert can teach me the process sales flow of selling a product in your company? Uh, no. Are there scripts that I know for a fact you can pass it over to me? Uh, yes, no. All of that stuff is down here. It's good, but it's not exponential. Here's the exponential, okay? This is the part of the business that gets your business to suddenly grow. So exponential growth, one of them to the left is next innovative campaign. What's the next innovative campaign? Next innovative campaign is, who remembers when Mitsubishi first came out with the next innovative campaign? They said 0% down, zero down, and we pay for your gas for 12 months. Who remembers that? Anybody remembers that? Gas for 12 months. You know what I said? Here's what I said, brilliant. Because everybody on TV was talking about gas prices are $5. And people are like, oh my gosh, babe, they're going to pay for our gas for 12 months. Let's go buy a Pitsubishi. It's not, it's like all they're doing is giving you a $2,500, what do you call it? A, 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 what do you call that stuff? A, a rebate. It's not a big deal. But what a great next innovative campaign. Hey, right now, if you become a prime member of Amazon, we're going to give you extra stuff. Oh my gosh, they're giving this away. They're not giving it away. Believe me, no one gives anything away for free. They're going to make their money. So you and this part, this right here, guys, this, like I talk about four things I say, you gotta outwork, you know, you gotta out improve, you gotta out strategize, outlast. One more time, outwork is what? Hard working, right? How many Latinos do we have in the room here? Any Latinos here? Okay, hey, can we all say that Latinos are some of the hardest working nationalities in America or the world, yes or no? Now, can I ask you a question? How come not a lot of them are millionaires? Because they just know how to work. I don't know many lazy Latinos, but they're hardworking. Number two, out improve. I don't know if they read a lot of business books. I don't know if they buy stuff to learn how to become business people or become better at stuff. But forget about that part. Number two is out improve. So you may say, Pat, I work, work, and I read all the books. I'm subscribed to them. I buy all the courses. I'm reading all the books. Then number three is what? Out strategize. The strategy part takes some time because you got to test a bunch of different strategies. So every single month, say today is, what's today's day, September 22nd? Is today 22nd? Okay, today's 22nd. On September 28th, I spent five hours all by myself already planning what we're going to do October. By the way, the whole year is set up for me. But I'm looking at what's going on with September and what creative marketing campaign I can come up with for October. Okay? So then I go for October. 
And so years ago, I was looking at our business insurance, and I'm going to talk from experience for myself on what mistakes we made. I looked at our 12 months, and I think everybody needs to do this. The guy asked me, the guy asked me a question, says, what should I invest in right now? I said, if you invest in anything, go hire a predictive analytics guy. Everybody in here, do yourself a favor, spend $100,000, hire a predictive analytics guy, and give him all your data. Give him all your numbers. Tell him, in three months, I want every single trend for my business. What do you mean? I want to see everything. How specific? So I pulled it out. And I pulled out uh, January through December, and I wanted to see what were the two you know, lowest uh, months that we had, and he started pulling it out. Well, you, you have bad Decembers, and then you have bad January, bad February, you have bad June, July, August. June, July, August, three months. So six months out of 12 months for us was bad. Why is that? Oh, because we go on a, such a competitive run, March, April, May, that on June, July, August, our guys get bored during summertime because this CEO doesn't know what it is to be a CEO because he doesn't put a next innovative campaign in summer because he thinks we already came off a run, so leave him alone, and summer goes, drops off, and it's flat. We're not doing this. We shifted. From the moment my entire emphasis became here, guys, I'll give you a basic number. We sell life insurance. It's boring. I'm not here to recruit any insurance agents. Our system does it for us. Two years ago, we sold in July 500 insurance policies, 600 insurance policies in July 2016. Last July of 17, we sold 1,800 policies in one month. Last July of 2018, this is two months ago, we sold 4,773 life insurance policies in one month. The most difficult product to sell in America is life insurance. We sold 4,773. 13 quarters in a row, we've sold more insurance policies than prior quarter. 13 quarters, that's three years and three months in a row that we've sold more. You know why? Here's why. For the first five years of being a CEO, I didn't spend a lot of time here. Now, I put hours on top of hours on top of hours here. I think sometimes people like social media, why did you take Valuetainment off? Why did you take a break? Because I wasn't strategizing. I'm like, what the hell am I doing doing Valuetainment? I'm not freaking creating content for entertaining who? No, break, came off. Investors, business, what are we doing? Three months, no valuetainment content. Then what are we gonna do? I got a wife, I got three kids. They're younger, six, four, two. There's two boys. I didn't see a lot of my dad. I'd like to see these kids. You know, the older one needs daddy. The middle one is, looks like the Incredible Hulk. The guy's like all muscular, like he's an athlete guy. The daughter, she's so pretty like her mom. I gotta be around her to protect her from the boys because I remember what kind of a boy I was. Right? So I'm like, I got all these kids here. Man, what am I gonna be doing? So I spent three months. Every single aspect of my life became a strategy. Everything. Why am I lifting weights? It used to be for the girls. Who cares about the girls today? I'm working out for a completely different reason. I want stamina, I want energy, I need energy for family, kids, business, life, crusade, cause, what I want to do with my future, my life, the next, I've given 20 years to the insurance industry, the next 20 years I want to give to a different industry, and the next 20 years I want to give to a different industry. God willing, if I'm going to be wrong, but I took the time. Listen, I know a lot of people get up and they say, well, you know, look at this. This is the most powerful tool. And pa, 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 look at it. Pa, pa, pa. They say average person touches this 150 times a day. How many of you in here are saying that's a small number? I do more than 150 a day. Think about it. I do more than 150 a day. How many of you touch this more than 150 a day? Think about it. How many times have you touched it ever since I spoke? 15 times? And you know what we do? It's like automatic. We don't even know why we're doing it. Yeah, okay, you're talking to people three times already. Guys, this is one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of strategies in place. Turn it off for Sunday. Don't touch it. Grab a paper, pen, board, write up. Every aspect, strategies, write up, okay? So now, thank you. Next, after this. By the way, this is great, but this is continuous, meaning you know this whole saying about, you know, the way they sell the dream. By the way, can somebody give me the time? Because I have no clue what I'm doing with time. If you can just tell me where I'm at. Which means how much do I have? 30 minutes or? I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Sounds good. So, but I, give me a time on so I can. 30 minutes? 30, 30? 30. Okay. All good. So you ever hear this saying? It drives me insane when speakers say this. Imagine one day you make money and the money comes in and you're relaxing by the water and you're drinking and the waves are hitting, 
and your girl's next to you, and you listen to Sade Cherish the Day, and you have money coming in forever, stress-free, and your kids are amazing kids. They're full of shit, is what they're telling you. This is never stopping. You know how long you need to strategize? The rest of your life. Oh, you gotta, my dad strategizes for, my, for his grandkids. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on strategizing for the rest of my life. This is not a one-time thing, this is forever. Businesses that continuously grow, they do this forever. Now let's talk about the last one here. Here's the last one. So, two and a half years ago I talked to Grant, first time, I think it was something like that, we're in Miami. And I see how he talks to Jared, and he's tough on Jared, right? So, boom. I go, wow. You know what Jared does? Let me tell you what Jared does. He makes this kind of, he told me the money, I'm not gonna say the number he said. Do you know how much of it he saves? He's broke because I make him put all the money aside because he gives it to me. And he does this with his money. And then just earlier, I'm talking about his pilot. And I'm talking to his pilot over there. Real nice guy, good looking pretty boy guy, right? Same way, boom, da ba 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 What do you think it is? Anybody who's working close to him, this is what's happening. His, his focus is here, whether he knows it or not, this is what he's doing. It's leadership development. What do you think Bill Gates did? It's all leadership development. What do, what do you think Popovich does? You ever seen Popovich's eyes? He looks pissed off half the time. Have you seen Bill Belichick's eyes? Do you see what Bill Belichick looks like? He was a defensive coordinator for the Giants working with LT, working under Bill Parcells. This guy's like, you guys have no clue who I am. I'm just a freaking, uh, you know, uh, this defensive coordinator. Watch till you see who I become. I'm gonna become one of the best coaches of all time. Hey, why don't you smile? For what? Yeah. I only have five Super Bowls. Can you just smile one time? No. So, no, no. Like, what is wrong with this freaking guy, right? But he's developing leaders. I had a good friend of mine, Chris Hayes. He played under him. He played under Herm Edwards. He played under him. And he played on the guy from uh, 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 Packers. What was his name? Mike Holmgren? Holm Am I saying it right or no? Did I pronounce it right? Okay, these guys. I said, so tell me how it was for everybody. He says, brother, it was the hardest playing for Belichick. I said, why? He says, no practice was ever enough or good enough for this guy. It's like, are you freaking kidding me? Give me a damn break. Never with Belichick. Never. The standards and expectations were so high. They're like, dude, let me breathe. Nope. We haven't won a championship yet. We haven't won a championship yet. Pat Riley, same exact way. Pat Riley wouldn't let his players talk to the enemy. Well, when Michael Jordan gave his speech at the Hall of Fame speech, who remembers that speech? Do you remember what he said? He said, I want to give a shout out to somebody in here. His name is Pat Riley. I think there's only one person I've ever faced off that wanted to win as bad as I did, and it's him. He doesn't even call out a player. He says a coach wants to win as bad as I do. That's leadership development. By the way, most people will miss this part. This is how you increase the value of your business. So I had a staff meeting. Very difficult staff meeting with our guys earlier this year. Everybody was required to read the book Principles by Ray Dalio. Everybody. You are required to read it and write a three-page paper on it. Everybody. I had the entire company read the paper. Now, if you, who's read the book Ray Dalio beginning to the end? Beginning to the end. Not read like half of it, because you know how many pages? It's like a Bible, right? 600 pages. Right? 600 pages like this. If you don't know who has no clue who Ray Dalio is, who has no clue who Ray Dalio is? Raise if you have no clue who is. He's a $17 billion guy, Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio, like Gates, Bezos, he is their advisor. Like, think about that. Like, that's Ray Dalio. And he writes this book called Principles. And I said, if I'm ever going to write a book, it's going to be a book like this, but I don't want to write a book. This guy wrote it. 600, everybody on your staff needs to read this book. So we had to read him. And then we had a meeting, very uncomfortable meeting. Mario was in the room. Mario, are you somewhere in here? Or no, Mario was in a room. Very uncomfortable meeting. Very uncomfortable. I said, hey, let me ask you guys a question. Um, what's your position with the company? I'm a chief operating officer. Cool. What's your position with the company? I'm a chief compliance officer. What's your position with the company? I'm a president. What's your position with the company? I'm a CFO. Okay, what's your position with the company? I said, can you guys tell me real quick who was your boss in your life or leader in your life that was so tough on you that helped you become who you are today. Oh my, mine was Mary. Started writing the name, just give me first name. Mine was such and such, such and such. I said, give me a personal story how tough they were on you. Oh, this girl wouldn't let me get away with nothing. 
He wouldn't let me get away with nothing. Oh, really? Wow. And I'm taking notes. Oh, that's impressive. I like this guy already. What else? And they're saying all this stuff. I said, can I ask you why you let six new employees who have been here less than 90 days bitch to you about reading a 600-page book where that complaint comes to me? So do you want to be a grandma? Let me explain what I mean. I'm telling him this. Here's how grandparents are. Grandparents forgive what? Grandkids. It's like, ah, it's okay. Let them eat the chocolate. My dad calls me yesterday. So my sister is a, a what do you call it, a, a vegan, right? So she doesn't, so, so what my nephew goes complains to my dad. And my nephew says, Grandpa, I don't want to eat that macaroni because that's, that meat is vegan and I don't like vegan. And my dad says, Paul, you can't play this because Paulette sees it. She's going to call my dad. So you got to edit this part out. <laughs> so my dad says, you won't believe what I did. My dad's 76 years old. So what did you do, dad? Pat, I put him in the car. I took him straight to McDonald's. I got him two Big Macs. I got him ice cream. I told him, eat all this chocolate all on me. He said, we went home. He was so happy. His mom's like, why is Sean so happy? And my dad's like, no idea. Maybe he had a good day today, right? But that's grandparents. And I'm like, but dad, you can't do that. But I have to do it because I'm sick of these vegetarians. Right? I'm like, dad, forget about this stuff. We're Middle Eastern. We eat red meat. They got to eat red meat. I'm like, dad, relax. It's okay. He is pissed off about his grandkids not eating red meat. I'm like, there's more things to worry about. That's what he's worried about. But that's grandparents. They don't give a shit if the grandkids don't want to, you know, you know, go ahead, eat this cheeseburger. It's okay, baby. Don't worry about it. Go buy them this ice cream. Parents, no. No. In business, the longer you're around, you lead like a grandpa. You lead like grandparents. And that's not what people need. People need leadership. Now, I'm not seeing being an I'm not saying be a jerk. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying sit there and, you know, tell them all that you're a loser, you're a moron, you're an idiot, you're just a piece of dookie. You are. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, you told me 6 o'clock. What happened? Are, you, are, we, are we BSing around? You told me 6 o'clock. Do you want me to take your word or what are we doing? Do you want to be a leader? You keep telling me, hey, Pat, when am I going to get a raise to $100,000? And I tell you, be a leader. It's 6.01. How come I don't have it? Pat, give me a break, Pat. Listen, you're not a salesperson. You're a W-2 at the home office. If you're a salesperson, you don't have to do it because I don't have to fire you. But I don't have to pay you hourly. I'm paying you a damn salary. You got to come through. Okay, I will. These things that you do. So how do you improve this area? So I'll give you guys a basic thing I did in March of 08. Take a sheet of paper and ask yourself. By the way, scream out... What's the one thing your father or your mother taught you and told you over and over and over again? Let me tell you what mine was. Here's, my, here's what my dad said. Never be afraid of the truth. Never be afraid of the truth. Always tell the truth. That's what my dad would always say. He's probably said that to me 5,000 times. What is that one thing your dad or your mom told you a million times? What is it? Say it. Save your money. Save your money. What else is it? Okay. What else? What else? Don't talk to strangers. Okay. All this other stuff. All right. You ready? Very simple exercise. Take a sheet of paper, make a list of 40 values and principles that you live by, and two, values and principles that you want to live by. So you live by, here's what I live by. I would like to add these values and principles to my life. Then out of the 40, bring it down to top 10. Out of the 40, bring it down to top 10. For the rest of the year, all I want you to talk about with your team is those values and principles. Over and over and over and over and over. What does this mean, Pat? I don't get it, Pat. Let me explain to you what it means. Listen, one of my guys on a conference call this Tuesday said, well, Pat, what do I do because I got these two guys that write bad business and I got these three guys on my team that keep talking smack behind my back? I said, okay, it's very normal. I said, how big, this was the question I asked this person, how big of a country can you build until somebody kills somebody? I'm sorry, what do you mean? Okay, again, how big of a country can you build until somebody kills another person? I don't understand the question. Buddy, it's very simple. A million population? 100,000? 10,000? How many people? One guy said, I think by the time we get 2,000, someone's killing somebody. Okay, there you have it. I said, now let me ask you a question. Can we have three different presidents of a country? Stay with me here because this gets entertaining three different presidents of a country. Each have a million people in their country. 
Can each country have a higher ratio of people getting killed? What's the answer? Yes. Based on what, though? You know, based on what? Based on values and principles that are taught from the top to the community. So from the top, the values and principles are taught, love one another, help your neighbor, all this other stuff, that gets passed down. We're not going to get 100% of people, but it's going to get passed down. Sometimes I talk about values and principles, people say, who cares about talking about values and principles? Are you kidding me? All that stuff gets passed down. This is all leadership development. Wow, leadership development, you know, I like to talk to my group. Nope, leadership development isn't group. Leadership development isn't group. The best kind of people you build is all one-on-one. All one-on-one. The people that impacted you in your life the most are all one-on-one. We can become celebrities. Oh my gosh, I want to be a motivational speaker. I never cared about being a motivational speaker. I don't do a lot of speaking. Just look at my stuff. I'm, you, know, you don't see me on the road always speaking. I get requests. I say no. I say no. Do you know how many times Albert called until we finally said yes? Nothing against Albert. I just, I like one-on-one and I like long-term because I want to see something grow. And then when you see Seal and you see personality, you're like, dude, she's just, of course we're going to do something with you guys. They're so amazing, their personality. I like one-on-one. My best conversations with Albert are all one-on-one. I bet you the best conversations anybody had with him is one-on-one. So you really want to build a business? Focus on one-on-one. Make a list. You know it. Ten people that need a one-on-one conversation with you. By the way, I'm not talking one-on-one, two-hour conversations. Half the battle is 27-minute conversations. Let me say it again. 27-minute conversations. Hey, Joey, let me see my office real quick. Hey, look, who's here today? Uh, uh, the, the insurance company? Can I ask you why you're wearing your ripped jeans today? Come on, bro. Do, do you want them to see you like somebody that you're going to be a leader here in the company? Yeah. Go change your pants and come back. What is this all about, bro? You got an image. Shit, Pat, you're right. Go. Okay. I'm gonna go. go from the back. Go, go. Okay. Hey, Mary, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Okay. Hey, uh, what's going on with Jackie? What do you mean? I don't know. Every time you speak, she gets upset. Like, did something happen with you guys? Oh, well, you know, last week, uh, you know, she never does anything. I said, Mary, Jackie works for you, and she goes out of her way for you, but you're starting to piss her off. I'm telling you, you push her a little hard, she's going to quit. And if she quits, she's gonna, you're going to have to do all her job. So what do you suggest I do? Why don't you take her to coffee this week? You, you let me take Yeah, go, take a, go, go leave her, go to Starbucks, and you pay for it. Pat, I can do that? Yes. Matter of fact, you're doing it today. Okay, and when you go, you tell her you believe in her, you tell her all this other. Okay, that's so I'm going to. Hey, uh, let's go. Where are we going? We're going to go have coffee together. Really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Am I getting fired? No, no, I'm just going to have coffee. So then you see them, and I look at them, because I have windows, so you see them, they're coming out. <laughs> okay, great. Like, perfect job, well done. Seven minutes. That's leadership development. Hey, can I talk to my office? Yes, what's going on? Hey, I was listening to you when I was walking past the cubicles. When you're making the call, and the person said this, you said this, it was on speaker, let's role play that objection again together. Why did you say this? So I'm going to say you say it. Leadership development. This, this right here. You'll learn how to do this for the rest of your life. You're irreplaceable. Let me say this one more time. Listen, guys, first of all, this here, they'll pay you 100 grand an hour if you're good at this. They'll pay you 100 grand an hour minimum if you're good at this. But if you're good at this, you'll be the president of the United States. Okay? If you're good at this, you'll run the biggest nonprofit in America. If you're big, good at this, you'll become the president and you know, president of USC raising $6.5 billion from boosters because you built the new place where everybody lives based off of Harry Potter and the budget is one and a half billion dollars. Simply because you know how to raise money. Simply because you know how to lead people. This right here. So now let's continue. By the way, I can talk about this stuff for three days. When we do our first live value conference, 120 days after we cross a million subs, we're gonna spend a lot of time doing this during the three day session together. But let me continue. Next. This is your game. You are in the replacement game. It's scientific. Everything is about replacement. You want to increase the value of your business? It's replacement game. What do you mean by replacement game? Who is the least living? Okay, let me ask it. Who's the least important living president today? Let me ask it again. Who is the least living American president today? Least, probably Jimmy Carter. 
because he's the last one. Not the last one, like the, what do you call it? How do you explain it? He's like 1981. Then it's who? Senior. Okay? Jimmy Carter's going to die in the next five, ten years. God, you know, it's just going to happen. It's part of life. George Bush Sr. is about to die. And then you have GW's ne- Clinton's next. Then it's George Bush. Who's the most important president today? Trump. And who's the second most important? Obama. Obama got replaced with a new president. Do you remember when Bush was president, everybody thought the world is at its end, you know? Oh my gosh, we're all going to die, and you know, this is just horrible stuff, you know? Boom. Obama came. And now we have Trump. Everybody gets replaced. Presidents die. Can anybody here name me the 15th president of America? Who's the 16th? Who's the 15th? (laughs) You don't know. But do you remember, do you know during that time, he's the most important person in America? How can... He's the 16th. Yep. Okay. Who's the seventh? No one knows. You, you know, first one is Washington. Second one is, you know, uh, Adams. Third one is Jefferson. After that, you're stuck. <laughs> Unless if you're 17 years old, still in school, and it's part of your history class homework. What's the point here? Guys, we're all going to be replaced. This isn't that big of a deal. Okay. This is a replacement game. But in business, if you understand this concept, your business value goes higher if you replace the things that you do on a daily basis. That's your job as a business owner, to constantly replace your abilities. So what are we talking about? Number one, what are some habits that you do on a daily basis that are $10 an hour habits? So I took a sheet of paper and I wrote for the entire day what I was doing. And then right next to it, I wrote which one of them I had to do, which one of them somebody else could do. And then next to what somebody else could do, I wrote the price tag on how much that cost. I went and hired a person to do it. And then I saw the habit that pays the most, I did that part. Because it's a replacement game. Number two, know who's a seasonal employee and who's not. Who knows the difference between this? By the way, how many of you guys have employees? I'm just curious to know what audience we're speaking. Who has employees here? Who has employees? Who's a salesperson here? You just sell, you're not a sales leader, you just sell. You're a realtor, raise your hand. Who's a sales leader here? You run a sales organization. Raise your hand. You run a sales organization. Okay, anybody else? Sales, who runs their own business? Who runs their own businesses? Who runs it? Who considers themselves a good CEO? Who considers themselves a good CEO? Your hand's kind of going like this. Anybody thinks they're a good CEO? A little bit, maybe, right? Like you always wonder if you're good on me. I go through it myself as well. So what's seasonal employee and what's not? We just hired somebody for nine months. She's seasonal, she knows it, she has one job. She took every aspect of our business and she interviewed every employee. And she sat behind every employee and watched what every single one of them did, okay? So why'd you click on that? Why'd you click on this? Why'd you click on that? Why'd you click on this? Boring stuff again. It's $80,000 a year job. She came a stack like this, nine months later. You know what it is? Any position we have in the company now, I have a manual exactly what to do, step by step by step. You know what that's worth? Probably $50 million. Probably $50 million. Because now I'm what? I'm replacing who? I'm replacing myself and I'm replacing everybody in the department. But there's there's certain employees that are not seasonal. I'm going to keep them for three years. Anyone knows the average lifespan of a CFO at a company? Three Three years. Anybody knows the average lifespan of a CTO? 18 months to 24 months. So you hire a CTO, they leave you. People's hearts broken. I lost my CTO. How long was he with you? Two years. No, no, that's the contract. (laughs) They're supposed to leave you. Yeah, I lost my CFO. Listen, guys, this is what CFOs do. It's very easy. CFOs do this. They come to you, you give them 200 grand a year and 1% of your company. They clean your stuff, they help you out, prepare you to go be bought by PE or go public, then three years later, they leave you, they're vested, they have 1%. If your company sells for $200 million, they get what? Two million bucks, thank you, it was awesome. Next, I do the same thing for you. Next, I do the same thing for you. That's seasonal. So you don't get offended when somebody leaves you. Okay, let's continue. Third one, know the difference between replacing sales leaders and employees. Again, this is lifespan. It's a big difference when it's salespeople versus employees because salespeople can have a longer lifespan with you where employees don't. Fourth one. Know who can maintain culture and add their own twist to it. How many times have you seen somebody hire an executive position that completely doesn't fit the culture? Anybody's ever seen that before? 
Okay, let me ask the question more personally to you. How many of you worked at a company where the CEO hired somebody and after hiring that person, they gave him too much authority, the culture within six months was lost? Who's ever experienced that before? How annoyed were you? You quit. I relate. You quit. So this person may have an inc incredible resume, but they don't fit the culture. You can't let that person run your company because they don't fit your culture. So a lot of these positions that people give of authority to some people that don't fit the culture, disaster. Disaster situations here. Number five, procedures and steps in every single department. We talked about that. Number six, develop leaders to help spread the mindset. Now, what are we talking about with developing leaders to help spread the mindset? Okay? Developing leaders to want to spread the mindset is exactly what we were talking about with values and principles. The more of the mindset is being passed on to the people, the more you're replacing yourself or somebody else to be mentally tough. Again, that's leadership development. So all of this stuff here that we're talking about systems, listen, uh, I could have had a different topic, which is, Pat, come and fire people up. You know, come and motivate them. Come and do this. Let me tell you what I get excited about. Topics like this, it goes like this for 70%. But the 30% who caught it are the ones that send me a ton of messages. And then I get a message of people flying into Dallas, and they'll come and say, three years ago I started following Value Team, and my business was doing $600,000 a year. Last year we did $17.8 million. Awesome. Three years ago I was doing $200,000. I almost quit my business. Now I'm doing $28 million per year because all I did is finally realize what it is to be a CEO and strategy. The right person embracing these concepts, the rest is history for you. So let me finish out with two questions for you to be thinking about before we, before we wrap up. Number one, who do you want to be? You know, this is one of the strangest questions very few people have the answer to. Who do you want to be? Albert comes up to me. Hey, Pat, you know, this is what we're doing. We're building this. And I said, Albert, Sil, who do you want to be? I, I don't know if I understand the question. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be a celebrity? Do you want to be a speaker? Do you want to run a sales team where you just take sales every single month and you're making commissions? Or do you want to build a business that one day somebody cuts a check to you for a billion dollars. Who do you want to be? I, 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 uh, I, I don't know. I don't know who I want to be. I said, well, let's talk about it. So we started, and he says, I want to build a company that's going to be a billion dollars. Perfect. That's exciting. Then we started talking about company names and branding and strategies and hiring and systems and protocols. And you see his eyes go like this. And I tell myself, Anybody weird enough to have their eyes go like this for a system, you are definitely weird, but I'll talk to you. Because most people, you go systems, they go like this. Ready? You want me to do it? <sighs> That's cool, Pat. That's amazing. I saw so many people yawning. Because <laughs> systems are boring, guys. This is boring stuff, but it creates wealth. So who do you want to be? You're in this room here. Some of you guys are like, ah, I'm a pretty good salesperson. Do I want to be a sales leader? I'm a pretty good sales leader. Do I want to be a business owner? I'm a pretty good business owner. Do I really want to be known as a great CEO by others one day, not by myself? You know you're a great CEO when other people say you're a great CEO, not when you say it. Everybody can go up and say, I'm King Kong. No, no, other people say it, you're a great CEO. You say it, it's irrelevant. It's good you got confidence, but no one cares, right? Other people say maybe you are doing something right. So who do you want to be? You're at this event. You heard so many different speakers. You know what's one of the best things about the lineup that he's put? Everybody's personality is different. You heard Ty how he does it? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I was at this, this woman here. You know, she curses a lot. But, you know, cocaine was, and, and so the psychopath. Men are more psychopaths. Woman, I think, is strange. So there's this bias cognitive. And some people say, I relate to him. I like his style. And some people say, dude, that guy pisses me off. And if Cardone comes up, yeah, pa 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 Dude, I like that guy's freaking fired up. He's sick, right? And then Brad Lee comes up, you know, like, yeah, hey, so here's what we're doing. You know, Brad Lee, the good looking, suave, modern looking, you know, model looking guy comes up and he does his thing. And then Tim Grover comes up, you learn one word, the F word. It's game over, right? You're gonna learn how to use the F bomb 24 7. But here's the point. The only question you are responsible for answering leaving an event like this is this right here. It's the only one. Who do you want to be? Guys, the moment I got clear about this, nobody could get in my way. 
You, nobody could get in my way. And by the way, mine shifted like this. My dad had his 13th heart attack. I went to UCLA Medical Center. Off to five. Anybody knows off to five here at UCLA Medical Center? I'm off to five. I go upstairs to the hospital, and they're treating them like dirt. And I lose it. I'm like, you guys better take care of my dad, and you guys better do this, and you guys better do that. And 22 years, I lose it, 23 years old. Completely lost it. Throwing stuff around, they're bringing security, escorting me out of the hospital, and I'm just lashing out at him. It's my dad. You, you, you don't do anything to my dad. It's like you crossed the line there. And then one person says this to me. Hey, listen, if you had money, you could get better insurance and get better doctors to take care of your dad. But you didn't pay for this. Government's paying for this. This is called public health insurance. Oof, fuse. He's right. I went in the car downstairs. In my Ford Focus at the time, I had lost everything. 49, nothing was going right. But my girlfriend left me. We're about to get married. 49, everything is bad. I'm in my car, okay? Tears. 30 minutes, I'm crying like a little baby, okay? 30 minutes. Some of you guys brag about going to clubs Thursday, ladies' night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was so committed. Tuesday through Sunday. You know your hardcore party if you go to clubs on Tuesday night. <laughs> Thursday night is a given. Sunday if you're half committed. Tuesday you're fully committed. I was fully committed. I'd go to Vegas 26 times a year. What club you want me to go to? Pimps and Hoes? You want to go to Dre's? What do you want to go? I was at all those clubs. <laughs> all this stuff. This is all we did. I was permanently banned from Dublin's because of something that happened. I could never go back to Dublin's. 22 <laughs> years old. Who knows Dublin's? Anybody knows Dublin's? I can never go to Dublin's again. I was permanently banned. So this isn't the Patrick you know today. It was a completely different guy. That night, in my Ford Focus, it was as if you, I came the next day, I didn't see a single girl. Nothing. I saw through people. People thought I was pissed. I'm not pissed. I fully got it. My dad's not going to work at this 99 cent store ever again. The B. David family, all these people that would say B. David family, oh, divorced, Middle Eastern, mom and dad got a divorce. Poor B. David, he's probably going to be a bad kid. I hear he had a 1.8 GPA, he's hanging out with gangsters, and he went to the army because that's the only saver he had. I said to my family, I said, let me simplify something for you guys. Listen. I said, the world's going to know this last name. I know the pain we went through. I know the challenges we went through as a family when we came to America from Iran. I saw your language barrier, mom, you were so embarrassed. I saw the look on your face, dad, when you were so embarrassed going to gatherings and you would look like people like this to people because you were so embarrassed. I said, you're going to be so proud of your last name. You're going to be so proud you came to America. You're going to be so proud of the sacrifices you made. That day, I never recognized old Patrick ever again. Game over. Like this, 180. No one recognized me. I got the best compliments of all time, which is, Pat, you've changed. We don't recognize you anymore. We miss the old Pat. I said, I have no desire to spend time with the old Pat. I'm in love with the new Pat. I don't care about the old Pat. And it shifted. So let me simplify this for you. If you in this room, you leave the same person, this is a waste of an event. Your money, you wasted it. If you came here just to get motivated and you leave and you don't make any big decisions about you changing you, this is a waste of an event. And by the way, life doesn't get easier as you age. It just gets harder, just so you know this. This is not a game. Problems get bigger when you have kids. Later on, kids are going to get married, more people die, more issues come up, more financial issues. I hope the right group of people in this room tonight, after you hear the next guy coming up, Who's Cardone? Everybody knows him. You're waiting for him to come up. <laughs> after you heard Ty speak, after you heard everybody speak, I hope you realize this is the question you've got to answer leaving this place. And if you sincerely, there's two different ways. You know the actors, oh, let me tell you, Pat, I'm so committed. No, no, this, this is not, you don't need to impress me or anybody. Like, oh my gosh, that really resonated with me. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. This is your show tonight. But if you leave tonight, changing you, and you get clear on who you want to be, a choo-choo train can't stop you. And by the way, 
people will look at you differently. Some of your family members will look at your eyes and say, why you look a little bit more intimidating? Because you know what's the one thing never lies? Eyes never lie. Because eyes move before we lie. This is why the best poker players wear glasses. Because even the best liar in the world doesn't know how to lie through their eyes. Did you understand what I just said right there? This will tell the world where you're going next. But I hope the right people here make that decision. By the way, every single time in a room like this, you know how many people are going to do this? Do you, do you really know how many people are going to do this? Maybe five of you. I'm not trying to make everybody feel good. You leave this place, oh my gosh, what a great guy Patrick is. Maybe five of you. This isn't an astronomical number here. Like, I'm not trying to make you feel optimistic leaving this place. It's five people. But those five people are going to leave. And many, many years ago, at one meeting, there was a guy named Grant Cardone. And look who he is today. Look at the impact he's making. It doesn't take all of you to do it. Five of you will do it. I just hope one of those five is you. Anyways, Albert Sill, thank you so much for bringing them. Had a great time with you guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.